What would you do if you had a graph whose x-axis went from 0 to 3000 and whose y-axis went from 0 to 100? How would you fit that on the snap stage, which has dimensions of 480 by 360? On this page, we're going to learn how to scale values so that we can graph any data set, no matter how big or small, on the stage in snap. Luckily, we're already given a block that does that scaling for us. This set graph scale, if we right click on it and open it, we can see that it's doing a whole bunch of math behind the scenes to make sure to scale whatever we set these inputs to so that they fit on the snap stage. In 1A, we have to click the set graph scale block because it's going to initialize a whole bunch of variables that already exist that have been created for us. And when I say initialize, I mean it's going to give values to these variables. And we have to do this because other blocks are going to be using these variables. So it's really important that we click set graph scale. And when we do that, we can see that we have an x-axis and a y-axis that have been drawn for us on the stage. Now you may be wondering, why does it say that the origin is 0, 165? And that probably has to do with the inputs that we gave to this block. So we have our x min at negative 2. So that means that all the way on the left side of the stage, that is negative 2 on the x-axis. All the way on the right side, the x max, that's 4. So we only have from negative 2 up to 4 on this x-axis. And on the y-axis, our minimum is going to be 30, and our y max is going to be 300. If we open up this block, this set graph scale block, we can see that it's doing a bit of math to calculate the x axis, the y axis, and all that stuff. Actually, this, it looks like this announce axes position block is what actually determines where the axes lie and what, what to draw and like what to label it. So that is all found inside here. It's all been abstracted away from us, so we don't have to worry about how that works behind the scenes. But you're more than welcome to look at the math and figure this out. I'm kind of glad they didn't ask us to do it because it would probably take three or four videos to explain this. Next, in 1B, they ask us to try to figure out some inputs or try to experiment with some inputs to get these two blocks to report zero. So X stage for X graph. So that's this block right here and the Y stage for Y graph. So what do I have to type in here to get it to say zero? Let's try saying uh, zero for, at the start. And it says negative 80. So let me try negative 80 and see what that does. And now it says negative 6,400. So that doesn't work. Let's try positive 80. 6,300. So it looks like I have to pick a, a number that's smaller than 80 because 80 is just a little bit too big. Let's try 40. It's still too big. Let's try 10. 720. That is not good. We got to get it to zero. Um, why don't we try 2? Two? 2 is 80. 1 is 0. So I could have opened up this block by right clicking and hitting edit and doing the math to set this equal to 0, but that's no fun. I kind of liked guessing and trying to see what works. So 1 makes it 0. Now for the Y stage, I don't know, let's try 5. Let's see if that gets us close to 0. So that's negative 213. So let's try 10, negative 206. So let's go a little bit bigger. Let's try 100. Uh, negative 86, we're almost there. Neg uh, let's try 150. Negative 20, we're almost there. Uh, what about 165? There it is, zero. See, guessing is so much more fun than actually doing the math for it. But now I gotta try to figure out the relationship here. So what's causing this to report zero, zero uh, for the X stage and the Y stage? So if I just look at the input values, so it looks like to go from negative 2 to 4, there's six places in between. So I'm going to draw like a number line on the screen. So you guys can see that the midpoint of negative 2 to up to 4 will probably be 1. And that's probably why we get 0 over here. And for the Y stage, for Y graph, I could do 300 plus 30, 330 divided by 2. Well, it doesn't matter. The math works for that. That would get us to the middle of the entire stage, which will be zero on the y-axis. So that is how we get the values, I think. Next, in 1C, it says to use the go-to block with these values, or with these blocks. Let me get, let me get the go-to block over here, and let me throw these in there. So that for the x, and this for the y. So when I click on this, it looks like it brings me over to the center of the stage, the center of the, the snap stage, which is 1, 165 in the scaled graph. 
And in 1D, it says without changing the sprite's position, click X graph at X stage, X position. So let me bring over the X position block in here, and I'm not gonna move anything, I'm just gonna click it, and it says one. And there's a really big, or actually a really, really small number, a decimal number afterwards. So we could just assume that that is one. We're just, we're just getting some kind of round off error. So what this is telling us is that at zero, zero on the snap stage, it is actually one, the X position is actually one using this new graph scale. And that makes sense because you can see it's to the right of the zero line, the X position zero. And in 1E, it says to use the when I'm dropped block to create a script that tells the sprite to say its correct graph coordinates, not its stage coordinates, whenever it's dropped. So let me go over to the control palette. Let us create this block. So when I am dropped, let's report these values. Um, let's use a, what do we have to use? Uh, that tells the sprite to say its correct graph coordinates. So we want to say the coordinates. So I'm going to use a say block. So I'm going to say and not for two seconds, but let's try five seconds. And I wanna put a sentence together. So I'm gonna go over to the operators block and I'm gonna use the join block to do this. So I'm gonna say, I'm at, and then I'm gonna say the coordinates. And to do that, actually I'm noticing that we have another block down here that will say the coordinate pair. So if it's like three comma three, it'll say it correctly. I could actually edit it so you guys can see that it's automatically putting the parentheses and the comma in there. So I'm going to use that block. I'm going to use, I'm at this coordinate pair, but we want to say the graph coordinates, not the stage coordinates. So I got to use this. So I got to use the X graph block and the Y graph block in my statement here. All right, and I'm gonna say this. So when I'm dropped, it's automatically gonna say the X graph coordinates. Let me make this a little bit smaller so I can kind of see it. And what do I wanna say? I wanna say the X position and the Y position. So I have to go back to my motion palette and bring in the Y position. And now when I drop the sprite, it should state where it's at. And it looks really nasty. There is a giant uh, decimal number. So, oh, look over here. In this little yellow area, it says to use the round to X number of decimal places. So we want to round to two decimal places. Let's do that. We want to round to two decimal places, and we're going to do that twice. Once for the X and once for the Y. And I'm going to bring in these two blocks. And then that's what I'm going to say as my coordinate pair. So I know this is getting like pretty intense. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of rounding going on and, and stuff like that, but Maybe this works. So when I drop the, hey, why, why didn't that work? That's weird. I'm rounding to two decimal. Oh, I messed this up. <laughs> there we go. So I have to say to two decimal places, and I want to put that in the X, and I want to put the, the rounded Y position in the Y. There we go. I think that's correct now. So now when I pick up this block and drop it, there we go. We can see that it's only two decimal places now. So this is going from, if I put the, the sprite like closest, like close to the bottom left, it should be really close to negative two comma 30. And it looks like th that looks kind of right. Negative 1.65 comma 42. Let me go even closer to the corner. Uh, I guess I can't, can I not drop it? There we go, we got a little bit closer to the bottom. There we go. It's really close to negative two comma 30. Um, and as we can see in our set graph scale block, those are the exact coordinates that we set initially. Now if I drag this sprite all the way to the top right, before I let go, it should be really close to four comma 300. And it looks like that's correct. So it looks like our block is working. Me just, like, I'm just testing it really quickly, but it looks like it's working correctly. Let's see, what else do we have to do? In number two, it says to experiment with various inputs to set graph scale to see where it puts the axes and how it represents the substitute for the axes when the point zero zero would not appear on the stage. Um, I'm not gonna play around with that. I'm just gonna assume that you guys can, uh, can play around the inputs and see what happens to zero zero if it wouldn't show up on the stage. Uh, drag the sprite a few places. Let's see, what next? Oh, why don't we go on to uh, number three. 
build the following block which takes the graph coordinates of a data point and have the sprite go to the corresponding stage coordinates. So they already created the block for us, or they're showing us the answer, how to build it. So let's quickly create this. This is going to be a go to, and I'm going to go to the x position, which is going to be a number, or I should say go to x graph, colon, and then x and y graph, uh, percent y, there we go. And now I can give these a type, which are going to be numbers. You guys can see that there's like a little number sign or a hashtag, but it's really the number sign or pound. Let me just hit OK. There we go. And now we want to go to a specific location. So we want to go to, based on this block, we want to go to X, which is going to be the X stage, and Y, which is going to be the Y stage for Y graph. So pretty much what we had before, except now this time we have to take in our inputs and place, the, place it right there. Take the parameters and throw them in there. And there we go. We created our block. Uh, let's see. On the baby name graph for Derek, the point 1971, comma, 0.25 is roughly in the middle of the screen. So before I do that, though, that probably means that I forgot to uh, set the graph scale for this. So I'm going to set it to 1927 comma 2014 and the y min is going to be 0 and the y max we're going to do 0 0.5 and these if you're wondering where we got these values it's probably because this data if we open it up those are probably uh, like the, the the boundaries where we would be able to see this data so this starts at 1928 so we want to start a little bit before 1928 so that we can see 1928 because if it's right on the line or right on the edge, you might not see it. And we want to go up to, let's see, it says 2010 here. So we want to do a little bit more than 2010 so that we can see 2010. And they're having us go till 2014. So that's okay. And then for the y-axis over here, this B column, it goes from 0, 0, 0.00 all the way up to 0.5. So it looks like we don't have any values that are greater than 0.5. Uh, we have a 0.43 down here. And that's fine. This entire data set will fit inside these coordinates. So let me set the graph scale. There we go. And now I can use this go to block. Well, actually, I don't even want to use this one. I created one. So let's go to. Oh, wait. I think I just noticed that I created it, but it already existed down here. I just had to edit this. Whatever. It's fine. Let's go to uh, 1971. And on the Y graph, we're going to go to 0 0.25. And it says that it should be pretty close to the center of the stage. And it looks like that is true. When I clicked it, it went close to the center of the stage. But we don't have any other dates on our graph. So something's up here. We got to add some dates. So something's up here. We have to plot the other dates that we have in our data set. So I'm going to save that for part two of this video. And we will create it next time. So stay tuned.